Hey there everyone, uh, I'm here with Ron from Faces of the Forgotten and uh, we're checking out, I gotta say, one of the more bizarre, craziest cases in the Chicago area. We're doing the case of Lori Dan, who killed a young boy at a school, but there's so much more to that, so we're gonna get into a little history. Ron's gonna help me with some of the info, and we're gonna walk to a couple of the schools where she committed these crimes at, and then we're gonna visit the grave of the young boy who she murdered. So let's get into the story. So Lori Dan was actually born Lori Wasserman, October 18th, 1957. She was born in Glencoe, which is kind of a, a suburb of, yeah, of Chicago. Yeah, very affluent. This whole area is the, the North Shore affluent area. She had really poor grades from what I've been reading. Yeah, like, she went to Nutra High School, which is where all the all the rich kids go. Uh-huh. <laughs> but she got herself into Drake University, which is in Iowa, and improved her grades there and ended up going to Arizona, University of Arizona. Yeah. And, uh, that's where she met that. We were talking about that, uh, that pre -med, <laughs> poor pre-med guy. Absolutely she terrible. She met this pre-med guy, and they were it got really serious. And then, of course, some weirds. This is where it all starts getting weird. The... Uh, the obsessive compulsive, right? Yes. And then he, he's like, I want out. And she, she started, well, there, she did some terrible things. And this was just the start of the pattern, you know, with him, not only the death threats and stalking, but she sent a letter to the, uh, she like called at the hospital that he worked in. This is, this is a little later on. And like even sent them a letter that he uh, assault. I, I won't say the word. Yeah, yeah. assaulted her. <laughs> right. Uh, in in you know which way mm -hmm. in the emergency room. Like she like right. Yeah, it's sure. like. And then it it, it unfortunately kind of gets more and more intense as we go on. I mean, over time she developed many more kind of mental illnesses. Schizophrenia was kind of the main one, but her mental health just downgraded pretty fast. Yeah. She ended up coming back here to Chicago when that failed. I think she moved back in with her parents, but she went to Northwestern. But then she dropped out of all of her classes, and it was just... And that's when she got married yes. to Russell Dan. Well, they uh, you can just imagine things went down the tubes. She was doing a lot of weird stuff. She was very possessive and controlling, and, of course, he separated. He's like, that's over. And then things get worse and worse she's seeing the psychiatrist they're giving her drugs i'm not even going to say that all different drugs so one of them was experimental at the time going through the divorce all the threats he said she came in his bedroom at night with an ice pick he had wounds police didn't believe it was one incident so then what happened next well she started buying guns and the first gun she bought was a 357 a smith and wesson and then i think she bought a 32 and now lastly she bought and this will come down the line is a 22 caliber Ruger. I think that was a semi-automatic. So she like was packing three guns. And it, I, I might say the parents were not helping. In fact, the police had said, uh, they said, they came to her house and they, when she bought that first gun, she told the, the dealer, she said, I need it for protection. And the police were notified. They come to the house and she's talking to the parents like, she shouldn't have this gun. And the parents were like, it's fine. She should have the gun. So in this whole story, we're gonna talk about that. but. You know, after the guns, well, she's, she's a babysitter, right? Yeah, yeah, so one of her jobs, I guess, was babysitting. And again, she got juice boxes, got Rice Krispie treats, and she put arsenic in these snacks and drinks and sent them to friends, to other babysitting uh, families that she used to babysit for, and just tried to send out a bunch of poison. And on May 20th, 1988, Lori went to one of her babysitting families and took their two kids. This was the Rush family. And she took them to the Ravinia Elementary School here. This is again in Highland Park, right. Illinois. And she left them in the car. She went inside the school here and she set a essentially a firebomb in the hallway right. which again this is the you know middle of the the school day people are freaking out people are probably running out of the building 
Uh, I believe a teacher, if I remember right, tried to get a extinguisher and try to stop the firebomb from spreading. Meanwhile, Lori exits the building and takes the two kids back to their house. And then she gives those two kids milk, which was laced again with that arsenic. Right. And, and this they spit it out. And they spit it out. <laughs> and and I wanted to backtrack a little. It's yeah. all you're everyone's wondering probably what happened to all those other people. I mean there were it wasn't ten or twenty. There right. it was a wide ranging thing. She mailed juice boxes leaking. Not a lot of people consumed them, but she had screwed up. They were it was arsenic diluted to such an extent. Maybe you got a little sick, but nobody nobody got seriously sick. But yeah, continue yeah, yes. pick it up here. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, so I guess it's a good thing that she wasn't a great chemist because right, right. <laughs> she obviously didn't know how much to put in of the arsenic, but... Anyway, so after she took the kids back and gave them that arsenic-laced milk... She ended up trying to kill them by locking them in the basement and the mother had come home, right? That's and right. And then she started a fire, but they escaped and she was already on her way to where it really goes downhill. And it gets pretty crazy from here, guys. So we're gonna head on to kind of the next couple of locations. After Lori uh, was at the school setting the firebomb, she came to a daycare and she attempted to set the school on fire. She brought a gas can with gas along with her and the staff there stopped her before she could even attempt to put any gas anywhere. So then she walks roughly three or four blocks to another elementary school. This is called Hubbard Elementary School. This is in Winnetka. And uh, she starts another unfortunate crime spree. This is where it really went down. And that's where it, we're walking right now. One thing to set the stage for this is she had three guns, remember. She had a 357 Magnum, a Smith & Wesson. She had a 32. I think both were uh, revolvers. Mm -hmm. And then she had a semi-automatic Ruger, which was a, a 22. Now, 357 is pretty devastating. And we're talking about loads and rounds. They're going to knock people down. The 32 is a much smaller caliber. I'm not going to say it's a, a plinker, but the 22 is, uh, especially with the rounds, she probably didn't have Magnum rounds very small rounds and here's the key to it and i'm speculating but i'm uh, someone like her buying a gun she's not knowledgeable she's just going to buy bullets mm. and when you do you're probably going to buy target loads now target loads uh the bullet itself is a full metal jacket which means it's just a metal ball if you will copper and when you shoot somebody with i mean it's for target practice but when you shoot somebody it it will just go through you it'll make a little hole and it'll go right through you and the you know what people police you use that we use defense loads and they have the hollow point and plastic and they're designed to do a lot of damage and stop you now why do i mention that because or why do they do that these days not only stop a person but not to injure anybody behind because those bullets just keep going mm -hmm. so she sh you're going to hear she shot a lot of kids and they all survived but one, I yeah. believe, the boy. So we'll yeah. talk about it, but I'm speculating. So just to give you the, uh, that 357, uh, and, and, and that 357 was disposed of early, thank mm. God. But That's, anyway, let's, yes. uh, let's walk to the school right up here. Yeah, so the, the one boy that was killed, his name was Nicholas Corwin. And if I remember right, he was eight years old. And like Ron was saying, it's, it is good that she decided to not use the 357. I don't know, do you know if it jammed well, or? Well, what happened was she was, when she entered the school, she went into a class and she looked around and they were like, and then she like left. And then she got this boy in the hallway and she shoved him in the boys room and she went to shoot him. And I guess the 357 jammed. Ah. And that's when she threw it away. And then she, from there, went to the, the fatal classroom mm. uh, where everything went down. Now, she had the 32 caliber. Yeah, she started with the 22, and the teacher took it away from her. They struggled. Uh, it, they say, they, I don't know if she disarmed her, but 
the gun was uh, inoperable, so she got the 32. Now imagine a 32 caliber with um, non-defense rounds would be uh, the full metal jacket rounds, those target loads. And she's just shooting these kids, and they're all in the corner of the room. And I'm, I'm just presuming a lot of these bullets, I don't know, if, you know, if they hit a vital area, oh, sure. it's going to kill you, but, you know, she's, she's just probably spraying. And a lot of these bullets are just probably going through or hitting, you know, unless they hit a bone. So, uh, but the one, the one boy, unfortunately, unfortunately was, was killed. And this is the, uh, this is the this school. This is where she went in. Ah, uh, so when we pulled up, he kind of came to maybe the side or the back of the school. Right. It's a lot bigger than what I was thinking. Cause I thought it was just this, uh, this, this side. Yeah, yeah. But it's actually, it actually goes down quite farther. Um, yeah, so this is Hubbard. Yeah. This is where it happened, guys. This is all where it went down. Now, after all the shooting took place, um, she took off. Came flying out of here, got in her car, and she, I believe she went down this road. Let's walk over mm. here. This road right here. Now there was a, uh, and I don't, I don't know for sure, but just the way things are uh, dead ending. Yeah. There was a funeral procession of cars that blocked she could she tried to get out so she went backwards and they talk about an iconic tree and when we came actually it's not this street oh, is this the other one? I'm, I'm, yeah let's go down oh, the yeah. street there's a tree like in the middle of the road so that's kind of a landmark and she went backwards down this road right here and I think she got to this tree, and maybe at the time she thought that was the end. And she, this is where she got out of the car. Now what she did was, she, her, she had blood all over her shorts. Oh, right, right, right. So she took her shorts off, and okay. she took a garbage bag and made like a skirt. Oh, right, right, yeah. With the garbage bag. So it's and, like impromptu pants, I guess. <laughs> yeah. She jumps out of there with the plastic bag around her waist. She's still got two guns. She's got the 22. Oh, right. And she's got the the 22 automatic, and she's got the 32 revolver. I should not. It's a semi-automatic, the Ruger. And I, somewhere here, straight back or to the right, she got into the brush. Kind. I don't know that it was woods, but she ended up. That's when she stumbled upon the house where there was a 20 year old boy in there a young man mm. he was a swimmer um so obviously of course 911 has been called many many times yep. police and fire trucks and everything they're else they're all swooping in and i think at this point i mean again this is all the same day the the two fire bombs or attempted fire bomb and then uh, the shooting it's all the same day may 20th so as you can imagine at this point it must be close to evening maybe afternoon she went in that house and went in the kitchen and this is what's unbelievable so what would you say if you were in your kitchen with your mom and a woman walks in with a gun and has plastic around her waist like a garbage bag first you go what in the heck but right. then she said i've been raped and she was freaking out so again your mind's like the mom goes up here, here's my daughter's, here's some shorts for you. And you're like, oh my God, I got to help this woman. So little do they know. And, and but the, she, then the husband comes home and uh, he's like, you got to put that gun down. And um, I think she had the, uh, the Ruger, the 22 was on the table. She was focused on the, uh, the 32 and the boy took the gun and he like, he like hit it. So now she's got the 32, which is still pretty lethal no matter what loads you have in it. And they're like, you know, the father's like, I'm not staying and he comes home and you call, and they're calling um, the parents and the parents are on their way. And the mother says, I don't have a car. I can't come over there to get her. They're like, get her out of here. And the next thing you know, um, the parents, I think both parents got out of the kitchen the, and, she, and she held the boy, uh, the young man. She's at gunpoint now, she, you're staying with me. And now the police are coming and she's it's surrounded and they're coming and and she knows it's over. So she just goes like this, boom, shoots the guy. 
And he has the, again, again, I'm speculating on the loads, 32 caliber um, metal bullet target load. If it doesn't hit a vital perfectly, um, wherever she shot him, he probably went through him. He got out of there. He was wounded and the police, um, they immediately saw it was happening. So they helped him. Now she's alone in there. Bullhorn, uh, mom and dad or dad's out there. Lori, come out, come out. This is your dad and maybe a muffled shot they heard. Finally, they move in and... Right through the mouth. She shot herself in the mouth. She was laying there and that was, that was it. So right. just a uh, one day bloodbath of, of, of sorts. Just, just a spree of carnage. Yeah. And unheard of in this affluent area. And how many times do we hear this? Oh, sure. So uh, the aftermath, and I gotta tell you the, the parents I don't want to get down on the parents, but the psychiatrist said early that the parents were to blame uh, her upbringing, don't know any specifics, but her parents refused to give the police, this is after all this, the police are like, we want to see your medical records. No, we want to search your bed, her bedroom. You can search it for two minutes. They like let them in. They're like, get out of here, get out of here. And then after they left, they broke the law. They went in and cleaned up and took a lot of evidence out. Uh. So they're trying to protect her name, I guess. So they, they're just, That's bad. they let her have that, those guns. They defended her. They did not see through the cloud of, this is my daughter. So they, uh, they're, they're, all, they're both passed on. And it's just a sad story. Although, I mean, you gotta feel bad for them. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, in, in the end, but yeah, you would never know that. You're here in this beautiful neighborhood. No. Quiet and... But this is that tree, though, that you're talking yes, about. Yeah, this, this is the one that... the tree that either blocked her, but they say the iconic tree. This has got to be the tree. Two or three hundred year old oak. And they bent the whole street around it, which I love. They, yeah. You know, I, I probably said we're going I to... like that they decided to keep it because I think yeah. it's it's such a fantastic tree. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I mean, uh, like I said, that that's, that's the story of Lori Dan. And again... Obviously, rest in peace to Nicholas Corwin. We're gonna to head to his grave and uh, pay our final respects. All right, so we drove not that far away from the last location where Nicholas was murdered. And this is the Memorial Park Cemetery. And I think this is still- Skokie. Okay, this is Skokie, Illinois. I feel like all these little towns are so interconnected. I live in this area, so it's easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we found Nicholas's grave. Um, so we're gonna show you guys. Now, Ron was telling me that um, there's a bunch of rocks placed on his grave and a lot of other graves around here. And he was saying that these rocks kind of symbolize um, some, some respect. So there's placing these rocks on their graves. It's like a, a huge sign of respect kind of for the, the Jewish community. Absolutely. And so I honestly did not know that. I've seen other graves over my travels with rocks on them. And I was like, why? Why I is there rocks? I first learned that at that movie, Schindler's List, at the end, which is a heavy movie. Super heavy uh, movie. All the rocks they put on his grave. Nicholas was a huge soccer player. He loved soccer. And there's a, a soccer field park nearby that has um, a plaque dedicated to him. And also, um, I believe they named the park after him as well. And so obviously a small kid, but had a huge bright future ahead of him. And it's just, it's super unfortunate. I always hate whenever a young child is killed in any fashion, but let alone uh, such a heinous kind of way. We'll move a couple of the rocks or a few of the rocks who can read it. Yeah. The little, little oh, guy. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, put him up here. So he died uh, just over a month after his eighth birthday. Um, and it, I love whenever a family puts like a nice, um, you know, kind of writing on, their, on someone's grave. Beloved son, brother and friend, a brilliant light, our, our, our everlasting love. Very nice. Nice little grave for a young boy. All 
All right, well, as previously mentioned, uh, this case has been a, a crazy one. It's been a long one. Again, thanks to Ron here. Make sure you go check out his channel. I'll leave a link to it, Faces of the Forgotten. And uh, we're gonna head out of here. I have a lot of more cases. I'm gonna be heading kind of around Illinois and hopefully we'll catch up with Ron another time soon. For sure. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.